Hello. Welcome to Iconic Production on Monday Nights. This is an episode of Call of Cthulhu starring me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lee. I will be your keeper of the lore tonight with an episode from this book, uh, <laughs> Call of Cthulhu. I just love touching this book. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Before we start, I do want to thank JD, our producer, for keeping us looking good and keeping us on the air, fighting those internet gremlins. I will, at this point, from now on, stop caressing the book so she cannot be weirded out by that. Um, because this is a one-shot, um, we're going to try to move things, you know, relatively quickly, so hopefully we can get to the end of the... <laughs> Chris is just taking up the mantle for me of just lovingly caressing that book. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce the investigators, starting with Becca. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to say anything about your character, who she is, kind of let our viewers know yeah. who you are. And then I will tell you guys where they are yeah. once we've gone around the circle. Cool. Um, yeah, I am Becca, and you usually see me over there in Lee's seat, and I think she's taking um, some delight tonight in being the one controlling all of our sanity. I feel so much more secure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's the little things to do before, you know, we go to our ultimate finale of the current arc. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a regular night scene. Um, but tonight, I'm a player, and I'm playing Margaret Belfla, but you can call me Peggy. Um, <laughs> and I'm just delighted that we are all here tonight. Um, my daddy's throwing the soiree, and ah, I just love it. I'm a dilettante, if you can. <laughs> I do nothing, but I have free time and money. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Free time and money. I'm right. It's everyone's Every dream. Time I want I'm free time and money. Room, I'm like, I want to be a dilettante because I want to be the person who has no purpose except to throw money around. Excellent. Beautiful. Why don't we go to Rook next? We'll just kind of physically as we see it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rook, and I will be playing Johann von Geistman today. He is a professor of folklore. So. Beautiful. And Phantom, who's also one of our moderators, who does an excellent job of fun facts and keeping the chat clean. Who are you playing? <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> we're all doing great. We're all doing great. It's a Monday. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> yes, I'm only I'm only uh, good at keeping people quiet on. Uh, on the chat because uh, if I open my mouth, otherwise JD would have something shoved down it like a shoe. <laughs> um, tonight I am playing uh, Etienne Louis Lafitte. Uh, he's a uh, World War One veteran, war profiteer, and uh, he likes funding occult digs. So take that where you're gonna take it. Beautiful. Oh, me. You can uh, leave. Wow. <laughs> Please stay. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to be useful in this whole thing. What uh, is useful? Sure, sure. So uh, this evening I'm going to be playing Reginald Hawthorne, uh, who is a professional um, art appraiser who has worked with this family and this museum and procuring a wide variety of art and artifacts. Um, that's, he's an American um, and he's got, uh, he doesn't have a lot of money, so he definitely likes to be around the fancy shiny things and be able to touch them. That's a nice piece to experience wealth in that way. So he doesn't have an, a lot of free time either. You know, because she's got wealth and free time. So, <laughs> no, he, he loves his work, and he loves to be around 
the expensive things and the shiny things and the shiny people, the wealthy people, something. All right. Well, so our investigators will be playing in 1931, uh, Washington, D.C., Arlington, where, you know, whatever you'd like to call it. They will be at the one of the Smithsonian galas um, tonight. Famed archaeologist, also father to Miss Bill Floor over there. <laughs> um, he discovered an artifact that is going to be going on display in what they believe is going to be the ancient Greek sect of the exhibit. Um, as far as ever anyone can tell, it is a book written in some form of ancient Greek. Um, tonight there is a lot of fanfare, but despite that, we, you know, for those history buffs out there, 1931, Prohibition is roaring, which means these people are not, and the effects of the Great Depression are beginning to set into America. Some people are more impacted than others, and others may not even know it's happening. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> So, we will begin by plopping everybody right on in to set the stage. Um, everyone has arrived. They have um, been given their, you know, glasses of punch and water or whatever uh, and the people did in 1931. I should have Googled things, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I see phantom screen just lit up. I'm just like, what are we doing? <laughs> um, sparkling ciders. Sparkling cider. I love sparkling ciders, so let's be honest. Um, and everyone has, for the most part, already arrived. There's no more need for, you know, that awkward hand introducing or whatever they, you know, would have done at such an event um, in 1931. So, you have all arrived, you have been given your drink, you have had some time to munch and, you know, crunch. You are accompanied by, you know, multiple different people. There is the museum curator, his name is Mr. Adam Stephanopoulos. Hey, I'm gonna get that one right. Um, I'm sorry, you said Adam? Yeah. So Adam Stephanopoulos, there are people of intrigue um, that you may or may not recognize as you kind of explore this room. For the most part, the gala is taking place in one of the main lobbies. Um, the artifact that you all did procure is allegedly in the back uh, for cleaning and processing um, perhaps if you're interested for any various reason or other you may want to try to find it again um, you do all note as all of you do have a relationship with mr. Michael Belfleur, he's not present in this vestibule I'm gonna call it probably because they're you know big grand rooms it's probably an ice swan I don't know. It's probably nice. Um, I mean, it's a museum, so it's not like crazy, but... <laughs> um, so you all will probably have found each other. Uh, and what is it that you are all doing at this party? Or gala, this opening? Are you asking why are we here? Or are you asking, like, what are we physically doing right now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Peggy was super excited that her best friend from college um, was going to be here tonight, but unfortunately she couldn't make it, so now Peggy is essentially just following around like the three other people that she knows. That's fair. And, and is able to talk um, with them about various things. Uh, she is learning German and is trying to practice terribly with uh, Johan, and uh, she is interested in the occult. And so anytime they, like, we walk past something unusual, uh, she'll ask Etienne if it's mysterious or occult. Um, so yeah, she, she, can, she has dabbled in enough things that she can hold a conversation, but she's just really trailing 
along, because this party isn't nearly as fun as she thought it was going to be. Sure. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ricky. Um, Reginald. Reginald. It's very different from Ricky. <laughs> I, so different. It's not even like the first letter. letter is, it's not even the same. Uh, Reginald. It, it, yes. What are, what are you currently doing? Well, that stymied me more than I'd like to admit. Um, <laughs> to just say to me. I gotta figure out how much sanity I have. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's probably a good idea, everybody, be aware of your sanity. <laughs> um, Reginald is. just sort of floating around the main area. Yeah. Yeah. And not saying too much to anyone in particular, more observing and listening to what other people are saying. So you might see him walk to from one group to the next, just kind of casually uh, passing along, essentially just trying to get a feel for the room. Okay. Johan and Etienne? Curse! <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing currently in the room? Well, Etienne is mouthy. Well, but... apparently Etienne's playing charades. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love charades. Unfortunately, Dr. Nelly Newton isn't here, so. <laughs> just going... I would say that Johan would be having a conversation with Etienne about all the various things, especially since. Etion seems to be interested in the occult, therefore you might say that he is quite uh, interested perhaps in folklore. I, and there's nothing that Johan loves more than to talk about folklore and to talk about all the interconnectivity of cultural yeah, idiosyncrasies that match up with other pieces and bits and come together to create a interesting spread it would seem, almost a web of sorts. That sounds like a fantastic idea, and I believe we need to pursue this much more. Actually, if we could eventually get our hands on the book, that would be amazing. And on the other hand, he's got the, he's got the, the drink, and it's like, oh, person, <laughs> swapping it out is almost as fast as it happens. So if it were booze, he'd probably be blitzed. Um, <laughs> and tab talk, you know, uh, code switching, as it were, he might uh, also try to uh, keep his German from rusting too much. Ah, oh, very good, very good. You've been working very hard on that, I can tell. <laughs> so, at this point, uh, Reginald, as you are kind of walking around, I assume you're probably with Peggy, uh, this, this kind of squirrely looking guy, um, a little red around the eyes, kind of greasy, um, he's going to come up to you. He's, he's in an all gray jumpsuit that clearly says custodian, uh, that it, it has been um, embroidered into his uh, left, I guess, breast pocket area. And he's going to come up to Reggie, or Reginald, and he is going to say, um, hey, 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 Reggie, hey, Reggie, Reggie. It's Reginald. Yeah, 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 that. Um, so, I wanted to let you know that there's a bit of a problem. Um, you might want to, <clears throat> I left the door. It's unlocked if you, you kind of want to, that thing, what? that thing you wanted me to. What, what, what kind of problem? What's... Um, so they called for the police. Uh, they're not being going... Oh, okay, come with, let's go. Come with me. Let's go see what <laughs> No, 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 I, I, uh, uh, okay, okay. Um, no? She, she got, she's got to come too. She's heard me, man. Okay, and Reginald gestures to the three of you. Please. Come with me. It sounds like there's an emergency. Oh, that's that's the guy who paid for the, the thing. Uh, yes, Mr. Um, 
uh, I, I clearly looking at Etienne and being real flustered, and he's gonna be like, ah, did good stuff. This, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's if we had the this. good stuff, my, if we had the good stuff, sir, we'd be blitzed. Look, man, prohibition might be on, but they ain't said nothing about good old Coca Cola. <laughs> There's a couple doors down. Look for the purple one. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so at, at that point, he'll he'll kind of look to Johan as, as well as Johan has been summoned over, and so he'll quickly be like, Reggie, he's good people. He's good people. This guy. Yes. Okay. You could always, you could always just ask <clears throat> me. I'm right here. Like, literally oh. right, standing right here. What's, what is the janitor's name? Uh, his name, it, it clearly Franklin. says... Peggy's ready to fire. So his <laughs> name is Franklin D. Azar, but he goes by Frankie. And right, that's right. on his, embroidered on his right uh, breast pocket. Because he's a janitor, I assume they have, like, pockets, like, up here mm-hmm. and down, you know, like, he's got a work belt on. But yeah, how the Smithsonian hired him, we won't know. But uh, they are kind and good people, so, you know. <laughs> you, re- you realize now, Lee, that you've done this, you have to bring him into other games, right? <laughs> you don't have to do any such thing. He's dead by the if end he's of he's dead! <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So this this is you crew. This is you crew. Uh, what? What? All right. What? Just just come on. Just come on, man. I gotta. We gotta go before. Um. You yeah. know. Let's, step in let's, the, step a lot of stuff. The funopolis over there gets over here. Come on. Come on. Stephanopolis. It's not as hard to say. Uh, no. I, I was doing. Uh, okay. We got. We gotta go. He's he's on the turn. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's 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 move along and maybe he'll stop talking. Hey man, I got you that other thing, you know. With Frank, are we talking about him or me? I'm confused now. Uh, Peggy what? is going to hook her arm into Johan's and just say, "You know, oh. I don't understand what is happening these days. I mean, we are hiring all sorts of people who do not understand anything, and we're going to follow yeah, Frankie." So, so you like you like his uh you're the you're the daughter? Is that that's what I'm hearing? Of course. Oh. That's mine. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, so you know that we haven't seen your dad in, like, days, right? No, I was not aware. He What's... Was... Oh, dang What this. is going on, Frankie? What's going on? What are you going to show us? <sighs> What's the deal? Well, now that the daughter's here, I don't know if I want a man. Um. If my father... Yeah. Is paying your bills. Ooh. Then you need to show me whatever it is that yeah. you need to show everyone else. Let's get on with it. Let's go. You see, that's the funny part. Um, so this needs to be like on the DL, you know? And um, Sorry, I'm DL. not familiar with that. Oh, right. Um, DL, that's a completely different language that I'm Yeah, hey, this, this needs to be on like... Yeah, professor. The down low, like the quiet side, like you know, with the fishes, um, because somebody's not with the fishes, but uh. Frank, Frankie, are you using some drugs? I drink a lot of Coca Cola, man. I wonder he's so that done three laps around us the entire time. Uh, um. Read on. Okay. Um. So. So, at, um, Miss Miss uh, Miss Belfour, how how are you, how are you with uh your blood? How how are you with blood? I mean, I know you're a lady, so like blood happens. I'm. But, mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> I yeah. cannot believe you are. I'm really hot, guys. To me like this. I don't feel so good. Uh, Reginald's gonna do... put his arm around Frankie. What you need to do? And just like start walking, leading the other way. Just shut up. Let's go. No, my mother. Let's go. No, you don't understand. He's dead. He's whispering this to Reginald. He's dead. I want to make a listen check. 
All right, go ahead. Oh, make I gotta listen. listen. I've got to listen. All right, first roll of the night. First roll. Check mark. Did you? I'm successful, yes. A All right, so so. Or forty-three out of sixty. Oh dang! So Peggy heard as little uh, little uh, little poor Frankie Franklin D A over here is uh, he's dead. He's dead. Uh, who is dead? Uh, your, 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 your dad is, is dead. No, mm. he's not. Well, you haven't seen him in a couple of days, right? That's normal. Yeah, um, I'm sure that's normal, but you know, this is a gala and he's supposed to be there because we're you know, waiting for he, him. Yeah. Um, would you just get on with it, Frankie? So Frankie will slump his poor little string bean shoulders and proceed to walk uh, down the uh, the corridor here, past some of the Egyptian, ancient Egypt, um, you know, heading over into ancient Greece, and then he'll open up one of the um, like the side doors, um, which will lead them into kind of like like a sub hall where the employees work and they're, you know, able to navigate um, the building without having to, you know, run through all the people. And uh, he'll lead you all that way. And then uh, he'll kind of look around when he gets to a specific door and he'll be like, all right, I'm gonna stand look. Uh, You're gonna what? I'm gonna stand look. Stand, stand look? I'm gonna stand as lookout, man. Are you, like, don't blow a wig over there. It's not that hard to understand. I'm gonna, look, just go in. Just, just go in, man. Okay. So I proceed into the room. Okay. Do you all follow him? Yes. All right. Yep. I mutually need sanity checks from everybody as poor Mr. Michael Belfour <clears throat> is a horrendous mess of blood on the floor. So would Peggy need to roll this she with a penalty? Probably die? would because it's her dad. Do you need an extra? Hold on, let me I'll get to your successes or fails. Let me just <laughs> paint, your, paint your scene. <laughs> so you see poor this Mike. This is a question. Oh, what's your question? Answered. What's your question? What am I doing? Oh my god. I uh, didn't play the game. You ha Okay, so on your character sheet which I sent you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have, I believe, let me pull... Insanity. Your, let me pull yours up here. I have 60 sanity. Okay. Yes. You so what you need to do is roll a d100, and okay. when you roll, as long as you get under your... What did you say? You have 66? 60. You have 60. 60. Okay, as long as you roll under that 60, you're fine. You, you, you know, you look at this and you're like, all right, I can take this. If you roll above it, though, you have failed your check and you will lose sanity points. Uh, losing a certain amount of sanity points in any given time will render a bout of temporary or sometimes even permanent insanity. I believe to temporary is five points. Um, and I think is, is 10? Um, it's one fifth of. One fifth, when you've lost a fifth of your entire sanity, right. you just, you're mad. In one day. In one day, yeah. Indefinite bout of sanity. Which... Yeah, yeah, okay. So if you lose five, um, you're gonna go a little crazy for a second. Um, all right, so what did you roll? Well, got a nine. You did, you, I'm, you're I'm, fine. Okay, you're you just, just You just stone face the massacre that's on the floor. So what's on the floor is poor Mr. Belfour. Um, he has, well, I'm gonna have you guys investigate him, but from what you can see, he is a mess of blood. His clothes are soaked deep red. Um, there is some rusted colors. The scent of this room is coppery, sickly sweet. Um, this is not an exhibit, but this is where they take a lot of the exhibits for cleaning. Um, so there are lots of things in this room. Unfortunately, it's 1931, so there's no cameras. Um, and he is splayed out in the middle of the room. And what is peculiar is how he is splayed. Mm, 
moment, bro. I've got to scroll. Um, actually, why don't we tell me if you guys have failed or if you succeed while I scroll? Okay. Succeed. <laughs> failed. And quite successful. Okay, you failed. So let me see how much sanity you're gonna lose. <laughs> you know, sanity! This is thematically appropriate. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, that is actually thematically appropriate. Um. So you are going to take four points of stand. How badly did you lose? I mean, I didn't fumble. You didn't fumble. Okay. Um, so you'll take four points of sanity, of sanity loss. Um, and so, why well, can't I wish I like did some cheat sheet notes because I'm trying to look at it. So, so the dad, so daddy is in the middle of this room. He is on. Uh, what looks to be, okay, there it is, a tarpaulin, T-A-R-P-A-U-L-I-N. Is that pronounced tarpaulin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tarpaulin, yeah. I don't Which know is, what that is. It's a tarp. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Tarp. It's a tarp. Cool. He's on a tarp. There are candles, and there's a piece of paper, um, and this room is pretty splattered with dried blood. There's lots of things that have some of his blood on it. Um, so that's what you see in the middle of the room. Um, what? So, you've just seen... Fun fact, uh, tarpaulin is the full name. Everybody calls it a tarp nowadays as a nickname. It was the nickname, and now it's the accepted name of it. Oh, okay. Uh, Peggy screams. Yeah, that, that's about right. Yes. <laughs> Johan being the one that was attached to uh, <laughs> her... Yep. Uh, Winces, of course, but then <laughs> considers that, that. Oh wait, I'm not in Germany. I need to console this one. <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of uh, holds her close to kind of just let her get the sobs out because that's bound to happen as yep. the follow up to a scream. Yep, yep, they're sobbing. <laughs> yep. Then uh, to Etienne, he says, "Shut the door." <clears throat> Alright, so one of you shuts the door. Reginald is gonna grab. You say Frankie's standing outside? Yeah, he's standing outside. Reginald's going to forcibly grab him by the collar, bring him in the room, and like shove him against the wall. <laughs> go, what the <sighs> hell? I told you it was a problem, man. <sighs> Have you called the cops? I didn't call the cops. Tommy called the cops. Somebody's called the cops. Yeah, but they are not going to be here for a while because the gala, um, the curator, uh, Mr. Stefanopo, no funnest, um, he didn't want the cops to get here until after the party members have, you know, had some time, there were some donations. He didn't want bad press, you know what I'm saying? Who found him? Um, I did. When? Like, you know, about, you know, 15, 20 minutes before I told you. Man, can I can I breathe? Yeah, he puts him he puts him down. <gasps> My mascara is ruined. What? That's not what she says. <laughs> <laughs> about about what time would it? Have, sure. So like, with a gala, usually they start around 7 p.m. So the body um, was found by Frankie at least by about 6:30, 6:45 ish. Okay. But Mr. Belfour has been missing for several days. He knows that because he is a janitor who works yeah. at this place. He seems to know, you know a variety of things. He sees lots of things. Janitors. Always cleaning up after people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just gonna... I just do weird things when I can. I appreciate you. It's just... <laughs> All right. Uh, Lee? Yeah. I'm going to uh, go observe the uh, the splay and ritual, as it were. Sure. See what I can gather off of okay. a cult. You're going to roll an occult check? If that would work for you. That would work. Of Saint Isle. I make it. 
All right. Yeah, 48. Okay, good job. Check mark. So, check mark. <laughs> um, so you're, you're pretty dang sure that something happened here was a ritual. Um, the candles are black. They are laid out specifically. There is some strange writing that you don't instantly recognize. Are you are you investigating just a general sweep, or are you like looking at the body? What are you looking specifically, like surveying the whole kind of thing? Or are you getting in- the initial? Yeah, the initial okay. part is to get the general spread of it. Sure. Then we can start picking at pieces. Okay, so yeah, you are like a hundred percent sure that some this was definitely the work of some kind of ritual, dark magic, um, possibly the behavior of a cult. Um, unfortunately, lots of, especially in your study, your history of not, you know, your knowledge of you know occult dealings. At first glance, it's never enough to really know what just happened. Uh, but you're you are so sure that what happened was some form of ritual. Well, here's another one for a chick track. I'm sorry. What? Oh no, he was. Uh, this was all part of a ritual. This is. Uh, it's an intentional sacrifice. Who would do such a thing? Cultists generally. I. Sorry, well, I'm far between, but Did it happens. Do not know yet. <laughs> so feisty. Johan, do you recognize any of the uh, writing here? I will go and I will look at the writing. What do I need to do? All this? right. Um, so I will. You can do. So. Generally speaking, you can do, if you've got a cult, I'm not entirely sure if you do, you could do it in a cult, you could do a science, you could do a language other, language own, you could do an anthropology, you could do an archaeology. Um, I will opt for anthropology because okay. that fits more with his particular realm of study. Okay. All right. And Let also us... because it's a bigger number. <laughs> I mean, fair. Fair. All right, so same deal, rolling under this particular uh, score. Correct. This individual score. Correct. Yes. Don't That's That, unfortunately, is a 50, which is above the score of 41, so no. <laughs> so, well, here's, here's the thing. You've got two options here. You mm-hmm. can push it, which means you can completely re-roll again knowing that if you fail it's kind of like some kind of consequence you know um monster attacks you in the library ensuring a consequence down the line well it could be an immediate consequence it could be a future consequence (laughs) something bad may happen and the severity is completely at the mercy of moi Um, oh okay well or you know you could use some luck you do have what's called luck. It should be on, I believe, the uh, if you're looking at your yep, paper, the left. You can Got spend 40. however many you needed to just get, I believe, two, just to get to that number you had on your piece of paper. This is a one-shot, so I deeply encourage you guys to push or luck, because it's a one-shot. You're done with these characters tonight. No use hoarding. I will spend 10 points to push it to a 40, so that I will not push it, but I'm Spend the, the luck. luck Spending the luck. Make sure. it so that it's under the thing. So. Okay. Cool. You. And oh, I'm I, so sorry. May I add something, uh, John? And for other people, when you are pushing one of those rolls, um, some of the examples I've, I've seen with other things is like if you were attempting to, uh, you know, listen to something, and you were going to push it to retry something, you might start straining your body cupping your hands around like that, it, trying to f- physically do something or to concentrate that you can kind of add into part of the description of what you're doing to try again. Uh, if it's jumping, it's, you know, okay, I get more of a running start, but again, the penalty, if you push something and then fail it, it's gonna be a lot worse. Um, Good to know. So with your success, with your anthropology, um, you 
you're going to actually pick up what looks to be the note that's a, a top of his body. It is what has writing on it. At first glance, it looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. Um, you can clearly tell it's in some form of ancient Greek. It's not a mainstream ancient Greek, which which you find a little peculiar. You don't, I believe, you don't specialize. You specialize, I believe, in mo like um, like Germanic. Um, Gaelic, essentially, because uh, okay, the Gaelic. Okay. Gaelic lore is spread all sure. over Europe. Okay, so it, you. You're not the best when it comes to translate, like you wouldn't be able to translate this, but you can kind of pick up a little bit to the point where you know this doesn't look completely Greek. You have friends, friends who specialize in ancient Greek. However, you, you blink and you notice that there's writing on the other side and you can kind of see it through some of like the, the places where the blood has kind of wet or dampened the paper. And you just very conveniently just flip it over and you will behold, there is English. And you read this one perfectly fine. And what you read is the following. My question is, is do you read aloud or do you read privately to yourself? His first read would be privately to himself. Okay. So upon first read, Johan, you read, I call upon Yog Saloth to hear my request. The gate and the key. This vessel has been prepared. Empty this body, transport my will, prepare the way to dreams. La Yag Saloth, open the gate. Yeah, don't read that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's just Becca. <laughs> <clears throat> Why not? It's not a Necronomicon. Is it? Is it? It's the dark hold. Oh great! Dark all over again. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> My hair's a mess tonight. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Wait. Uh, is it the so bad? The book? Uh, no. No. Okay, no. it's just a no. It's just a no. Okay, I just. Go on, carry on. Dumb question. You haven't really looked everywhere else in this room, though. Right. Just the. I was looking Not the book, something else. piece of paper, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. My bad. No, no worries. Okay, so Johan, I'm sorry. Johan, after reading this, will be taken aback, and he's going to try to rack his brains around this idea of a Yogg-Sothoth, Yogg-Saloth, whichever... So, yeah, Yogg, it's, it's Yogg, I'm sorry, it's not even any of that. It's Yogg-Soth-Oth. Ah, Sothoth. Sothoth. Okay. There you go. Sorry, guys. I just changes everything. I just wanted an L in there. <laughs> yeah, why not? Whatever. Maybe so, at Yuck least Sothoth. that means I didn't awaken something when I read that aloud. <laughs> uh, um. You know, you'll, you'll find out later when you go to bed. <laughs> sure will. <laughs> cool. Oh, boy. All right. So, but uh, yeah. upon reading that, he's going to try to rack his brain around. What is a Yuck Sothoth? And then if he's not, if he's coming up blank, he's just going to. This appears to be some sort of summoning ritual. If I had to put any words on it. Etienne, uh, I know that you're very familiar with the occult in more ways than I care to tie myself into. Read it, but do not read it aloud on the off chance. Okay. Sure. Takes it. Reads it. Not allowed to himself. Okay. Actually, um. Fun fact, they don't have any information in here. I'm just gonna look. How crazy do I get? How crazy do you get when you read this? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you just when you just casually read this? Okay. Nah. Okay. Um, is there any, well, can I go ahead and try occulting the language on the other side? Yes. The non-English? Yes, you can. Since that's my strong suit at this point in time. 38 standard. 
Okay. Uh, so, unfortunately, the playbook that I'm running from doesn't tell me a dang thing about this character, so Becca is really quickly trying to find its card. Um, but the language that you're looking at is definitely what you find is it's a dialect of ancient Greek. I'm that's, here's a child of one of those. Oh, neat. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, neat. Oh, neat. Anyway. We're just gonna Tentacle. we're just Would gonna talk about that later. Give me the keyboard. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, but so okay. you know you know it is an it is a form of ancient Greek, but it's kind of akin to how Creole is a form of French. Um, yep. That it's the same thing. However, because you have um, an interest already, and you you're kind of you know, bank rolling digs and investigations all over the world, you are pretty familiar with this sect of ancient Greek. Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. And that it is, um, let me quickly scan here and just see if I can, if I want to give you anything else. Um, okay, Sorry. you do know that there are, oh. <laughs> um, she, yeah, she also has this book. Um, that there were people in Greece who all basically prayed to a deity uh, that um, they all lived, um, I believe it's the Greek, uh, oh shoot, what's that island where uh, Macedon was? Macedon. Crete. Crete. You know them to be people who were, were very crazy in a cult in Crete. There you go. <laughs> oh, great. So, Etio Cretan, okay. Fantastic. Uh, ATL Cretan, actually. Um, this is uh, rather old and very specific. Very, very specific. What? What did it want? Well. Uh, in short, your dad was the, your father was the price of admission to the dreams and to bring something else here. That, that doesn't make sense. How great, like, is the body like in pieces? No, the body's not. So nobody's. Does she want to look at the body? Yes, we do want. To. I want to see if he's like missing. She's gonna look at the body. Anything. That's that's gonna be the answer here. So I'm going to one need you to make another sanity check, <laughs> and I also need you to do a spot hidden. No penalty. Or, or no, no penalty. Should we also all do spot hidden rolls as if, part of? If you're looking, looking at the body, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're pushing. May I, may I have that? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually. Hot day. I see nothing. You see nothing. I'm yeah. glad I rerolled that. I rerolled a seventy to a zero. Zero. Extreme. Okay. No, I rolled a one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I rolled well, the, let me, the best. I'll come back to you. Yeah. I want to know. Your spot hidden. I know what her. I want to know what her sanity is because oh, I really. I don't think I want to reroll my sanity. <laughs> Can I spend luck on sanity? I'm trying to remember now. I, you, no, I do not. No, I don't think you so. You cannot. I know no, that I answer. So. I don't even think I've you asked can that push to sanity. You. I've asked that no. same question yeah. to you. So, I mean, so I failed my sanity. Okay, so you've lost, you're going to lose another two, which is seven. So I think that does take um, you into a temporary. No. Yeah, uh, in one, in no. one, in one, one. moment. I okay. Have right. It's okay. five in one moment okay. or a fifth in one day. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I'm approaching the fifth quite rapidly. Like, <laughs> yeah, no joke. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> There's a lot of sanity rules in this. If so, if any of you uh, no, actually are going to look to at the body, you need to do another roll for sanity. That only puts me to six. Times. Okay. So, um, so she's looking at the body. So, can, did you do a spot hit? I did, roll? and I did not succeed in my. Did you? Ah! Yeah. Did you succeed at all? Like nothing. In my spot hidden. Okay. You no. you at least know enough that none of his body parts are removed. And this is this is still like his wallet and things. Uh, if you're gonna rummage the body, I'll need an investigate roll, I believe. Isn't that called investigate? Okay. Instant investigate. Yeah. Hold on. 
could just uh, be another, like, s if I'm trying to find something that isn't easily seen, it would be, like, a spot hidden. No, I, it's just a general, I thought we had an investigate. Mm -hmm. It's telling me make an investigate roll. The book lies to me. Apparently. Um, what's the one that you can generally do? Explore? What's spot the one? hidden? Is it what it is? When I mean, usually when I have you guys look for something, it's a spot hidden. Okay, well, I'll just make you do not spot hidden. All right, I went. Okay, and then are either um, <laughs> is Etienne or Johan also now <laughs> looking at the body? Yes, I did. I oh, failed oh, the spot oh, hidden, and I succeeded on the sanity. Okay, so succeeded on both. Failed spot. Failed. Succeeded on sanity. Okay. Okay, you're good on sanity. Um, what you see, though, is you're, you're seeing a massacred man. Johan, are you looking? It... Yes, he will, he will take part. Okay. What am I rolling for this? Uh, I'm sorry. A, was... you're, no, you're fine. You're going to do a spot hidden. And for your, you got an extreme success on your spot hidden on him? Yeah, I rolled a one. You rolled a one. Okay. So this is what you, you can see. And if... Uh, quickly, I'm gonna ask John, um, Brooke, what did you get? Mm, let me find spot. See nothing. We'll do 64 on a spot, which I needed 25. Mm -hmm. And for sanity, if okay, so prior to that again, that is a 25. I'm good. Okay. Well, uh, Peggy's going crazy, and you all seem to be fine. <laughs> did you roll your sanity as well? Yeah, I'm fine. I was successful. Okay. Um, <laughs> he did roll several times. Oh, he did. I okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So what you see in your extreme success with your one on the body is he does have his wallet. Um, he has he has some car keys. Um, he's got museum keys. Um, he has so his wounds are interesting. They start at the crown of his head and they actually spiral down to the nape of his neck, right at the beginning of the spinal cord, that little ball right there. Like, so the, they... they're spiraling kind of kind of like somebody drew like this. Is it like... And it's like and... Shh, gashed in. So like his, his back of his how, hair is like how, peeling down. How deep is skull. the incision? Uh, to the bone. To the so bone. So just to the bone. Just to the bone. Which on the skull is not very deep. Correct, but, but I'm not done explaining. Okay, okay. Um, Keep going, sorry. So he looks like he's kind of been scalped with the way that this is, you know, spirals. Slinky so. scalped. Slinky scalped. Um, so as, you know, as he's doing this, you're watching and you're just kind of losing more sanity as you're watching and as, you know, your father's beautiful hair. What colors, what color is her hair? Oh, Peggy's blonde. Oh, as his beautiful <laughs> golden locks, lightly curly, just, you know, nah. <laughs> Um, um, Peggy might throw up. That's fine. <laughs> on the body. Um, what, what <laughs> on you, the body. On the body. No. What, you, what, you, what you also see, let me know if you're doing that or not. What you also see is his neck has been slashed. You will also note at this point there is a dagger that is in his right hand. Um, that dagger is bloody. Hmm, go figure. Um, he <laughs> is in rigor mortis, so it is firmly in his hand. Um, and the way that the gash goes is he did it to himself. It's slightly at that right angle, uh, where it's, you know, he's pulling it towards his chest. So it is clear to you that this man slashed his own throat. Um, you're, you're pretty sure at that, with the way that the spiral is going, it kind of leans more towards the right of his body. It's not in a perfect straight line. You're pretty sure he did that to himself too. And you're pretty sure that he used that, um, the, uh, the dagger, which to you looks like in your, um, because Reginald, um, he flirts with the antiquities as well. Um, and so he's pretty familiar that this is probably some form of ancient Greek, um, throwing knife. Um, and it is definitely made by well, I... what would be Crete. People, the people of Macedon. Macedonia? Macedonia. I played Odyssey. I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Do a thing or two. Um, 
And, and so, but not only that, you'll notice that he's got a lot of scars on his body, but these are scars. These are older. Some are completely healed. Some are scabs at this point. They're all in funky language, similar to the piece of paper that you've seen Johan and Etienne look at. Um, those are definitely older. They are not associated with what happened here. Um, but the Did biggest they... cue that you're getting is this man killed himself. Hmm. You said rigor mortis earlier. Mm -hmm. Is that, I want to ask very specifically, is that part of the description? Because that mm -hmm. could help give us mm -hmm. some idea yes. about how long ago it happened. Well, you would have to pry open his hand. Yeah, I, I want to try yeah. to do that. And when you said rigor mortis, I yeah. I wanted to try and make sure that Yes, he is he has clamped up. He's been he's been missing for several days and a lot of right. this blood is dried. Some of it, it not is dried. So, some of it okay. not so much, depending on how much of it. So the pool that's on the tarp probably hasn't really dried because it's thicker. Um, but like the splashes are more rusty and yeah. Coagulated. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I need to Google how long is it. Yeah, it can anywhere between one to six hours. So yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely. Rigor mortis will also last one to four days. Yeah, so he's right Once in that. Once set in, so. Yeah, he's right in that sweet spot. So, um. Does he have the smell of decay yet because sometimes it's, bloating is the thing that can happen when you get to a certain... It's still, it's still a sweet scent. It is the scent of decay, but it's that um, unfortunately I uh, watch too many murder mysteries um, and so fun fact, I found out that you smell really sweet before you get real sour. Um, and so that's where he's still at. Um, and Ricky, the other thing that I'm so sorry, Reginald, <laughs> the other thing, <laughs> uh, the other thing, uh, that we don't know where Ricky is in 1931. He could be dead for all we know by now, but I know I was halfway <laughs> tempted to use him this evening yeah. and then I could and be then like, oh, back he doesn't die. Yeah. <laughs> he never dies. He has a twin. <laughs> um, no, no, moving on. You also see... Um, <laughs> there is a square shape off to the side of his suit jacket. Like, okay, you say square shape. Is that it a you pocket? Can see is something's it inside. Oh, okay. Something's inside his jacket that's kind of shaped like a square. Like the square or like, you know, book size square. Something is in his jacket. Book size square. Okay. So, um... I neglected to say earlier that uh, something that Reginald does is wear gloves um, all the time. I mean, it's it, it wouldn't be very out of place at a gala when everybody's dressed up and everything else, but Reginald definitely is wearing gloves while he tries to reach in and, and, and touch this rectangular object. Uh, he will pull out a silk bag holding something that feels weighted, but not too heavy. Kind of hollow when you touch it, whatever's inside. But it is in a silk bag. Okay, and would I recognize it from anything? Because, I mean, Reginald was part of, Reginald has seen the book before. You don't recognize the silk bag. No, okay. But you, Pretty sure this is the same size and shape of the book that you right. guys discovered. Look inside. It is the book. I'm swearing. Haha, I saved it, censored it. <laughs> he doesn't. He. He doesn't tell everyone that it's the book. Okay. What are you hiding, Reginald? It's just, it's some other. So yes. Right, it's it's not the book, wink. No, um, I'm gonna have to do fast talk. Um, but Did she actually ask? I thought she No. Like, she didn't actually ask. Becca wants to know, what is Reginald hiding? What deep dark secret does he have? Because you smell fishy. 
I showered like two hours ago. Okay? We're talking about Reginald. <laughs> I'm, I, I need to be clear. Is, is Becky, is Becky, is Peggy. Call me Becky. I, I Ricky, mixed, Becky. I mixed Peggy Ricky. and Becca. 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 <laughs> Becca. <laughs> okay, bring me back. Since I can't charm my way out of a paper bag, but I can persuade, and I'm going to pers switch a little bit of persuasion along with psychology and try to calm Peggy down. Oh, lovely. Get her to relax a bit and just, yes, this is something horrible, but you can't really do anything about it right now. Thank you. <laughs> what do you want me to do on that, uh, Lee? Do you want a psychology, persuasion, both? Whatever, whatever is uh, your highest. I should say, okay. uh, technically psychoanalysts, uh, psycho no, psychoanalysis no, psycho would be the Would be the thing skill. for it? Oh, okay. Well, fine. Then, uh, persuasion it is. Psychology is more of the figuring out why people do what they do. Okay. Well, that's uh, uh, ought four Ooh. of 50, so that's what? That's hard? Hot or thing. extreme? That's extreme. That's an extreme. Thing, okay. Man. Yeah. So she's calm. Check mark. Thank you. I knew I could count them. <laughs> you, my father's dear, dear friend. Yeah. It is, it is sad. All right, so, are, what else are you guys, are you looking around the room? Are you? Johan is going to look around the room once Etienne takes over the, uh... <laughs> Peggy, get, get yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's going to try and see if there's anything that he has come across in any of his lore, anything in this room to make this room the significant place of this particular ritual. Okay. See if there's anything that meets his knowledge that he has on right. other types of lore. Sure. Um, give me a spot hidden. Oh boy. And remember, you can push it, or you can spend luck if you're close. We'll find out first. We'll find out. <laughs> I'm gonna spend. spend. <laughs> uh, we're gonna <laughs> count. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna have to spend three. Alright, that's not bad. That's, not, that's bad. not bad at all. Okay. It's not bad at all, so I'm spending three luck. Right. You're so, spending three to come so that's around. a 24. So, in this room, a lot of it is the standard ancient Greek. Um, this is the Greek exhibit area that uh, Frankie did take you guys to. Um, you will note uh, a book on one of the workbenches um, that has a plethora of different tomes on it. The one that st sticks out to you the most actually is a primer in Greek vocabulary. Um, and the reason why that sticks out to you is because no professional needs that in here and especially it's a primer it's not like some psycho i shouldn't say psycho not some extreme dissertation not you know rosetta stone it's a primer it's basically the equivalent of you know those books for dummies that you know we have in this day it's and great age. for dummies essentially yeah so that strikes you as peculiar um you will also Definitely. note that there are several different accounting ledgers um, and you find that a little peculiar as well, because why are accounting ledgers in here? And, um, what you find is it looks to be written in that same strange ancient, um, Cretan kind of language that you, you know, that, um, 
as um, Etienne had pointed out to you. So that's a little funky. Um, you look and see as you kind of, you know, kind of walk around this room to see, you know, why was this room good for the ritual? Is that was the original question, right? Uh, part of it, yes. Okay. Um, you will see that, you know, there are some books uh, called Myths and Legends of Ancient Greece and Rome by E.M. Behrens. You will see Interpretation of Dreams by Sigmund Freud, which is actually, consequently, in German. So you do find that one real strange, because you know that Belfort doesn't speak German. And you know that, because when you talk to him, he always tells you makes it a point. <laughs> Dear sir, I don't speak German. Why I have an English accent, I'll never know because I'm from Georgia. But here we are. <laughs> well, you know, there's a reason why you would go to that particular one. There you go. There you go. Sometimes you just gotta get I don't speak oh, that German stuff you got. I do like sauerkraut. That's what he said to you. I do like sauerkraut. <laughs> um... So you find I that I peculiar. Have to so much of my life. <laughs> um, you also notice dried blood on the window. Uh, <laughs> she said unenthusiastically. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so from what you know, at least from what you've gathered, this is not a professional performing a ritual. Um, and this time and place and situation probably could have been done anywhere. You reasonably deduce that the reason why it happened here was because it timing. This was a discovered book that was going to be featured at this gala, and it was going to be put behind a nice piece of glass and protected by a lot of security guards. Timing is what it came down to. Yes, uh, Reginald. I changed my mind from earlier. Reginald is going to tell everyone about the book. He feels about... guilty. <laughs> it was... I'll, I'll explain momentarily. Um, he's going to tell everybody about the book, about the description, about the things that he noticed with the body. Um, he says, I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm sort of shocked about this. I was part of the crew and and originally finding this book, and I didn't know, I wasn't sure what I should say right away. But I feel we've all been thrown into this horrible thing together, and we need to work together to do something, figure out something, and... Where did y'all find this book? I, I can't rightly remember. Crete. Crete. <laughs> you guys went on a dig at some ruins in Western Crete, specifically in a cave. What was remarkable? We came out of the cave walking on our hands. Never mind. What was remarkable was that the cave um, was well preserved. Um, there were lots of paintings on the wall that suggested some kind of giant deity. Um, you definitely saw remnants of like ritual sacrifice that you assumed, you know, could have been goats or whatever. You did find human remains. You assumed that they were burials. Um, but maybe in this different light, you might be thinking differently. And have any of you all studied this book? Yes, a little bit. I'm sorry, Johan, I can't hear you. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I had to... It's something in my throat, so... Um, uh, it's not my particular area of study. However, if... Is there a particular reason why your father would have accounting ledgers in here? As well as a primer on Greek? Account? The Greek Account language, language, as well as uh, a book by Sigmund Freud. This book by Sigmund Freud, which he most definitely does not read, because the last time I tried to teach him something like this, he just nodded at me and then proceeded to slap me over the face. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry he did that. Um, 
It's okay, we were drinking, things were weird. Yeah, uh, I, I assume <laughs> so. Um, I mean, I'm a Calatoon ledger. Uh, it, Two of them, just... specifically. No, so for who uh, owes money? Yes, but most of it is written in this. Forgive my French, Etienne, but uh, bastardized Greek. I mean, you all found this in Greece, and if he's trying to read it, I suppose he's trying to learn some Greek. Yes, but he was reading it in the ledgers. That's what's weird here. On top of that, he's reading the. What was the name of the book by Freud again? My brain is. The dreams. Uh, that dream book. Now I just want to call it. Uh, the, uh, it's called the interpretations of dreams. The interpretations of dreams. Johan is going to look at the situation before him, and then he's going to try to quickly skim through the book and see if he can find anything since. German is his native language. Sure. Try to find something that matches up vaguely with the note that yeah. or the ritual that was left on his chest, all that. And then he's also going to look to Etienne before he gets too deep into it and go, by the way, there's below the over Zalons that window. Maybe check, maybe more than likely there was a second person, but perhaps you might be able to see better while I try to see if there's any correlation here. This is a good idea. All right. Um, so, Sig, uh, Sigmund, um, <laughs> Johan, uh, So, tell me about your father. <laughs> well, he's dead. Uh, so, uh, Johan, you'll, you'll quickly kind of skim through this book. From what you can tell, um, the book is about interpreting dreams. Um, a lot of it Sigmund gets into that's a little bit too technical, like, you know, if you see a a, uh, a white panther, well, clearly that means something rare and uh, fortunate is going to come your way. Um, some of it's a little, you know, gobbly, um, in that you're like, this is a bunch of, what the heck, Sigmund? Like, I feel like at this point in time, I know you. Um, <laughs> um, but what you'll kind of begin to purse together here, though, is this is all about maybe entering some kind of dreamland. Um, the, the note definitely spoke of a deity that was an interstellar, like an interplanetary walker. Um, this is a book on dreams. Um, the the way that Se uh, Sigmund, jeez, old Pete, I just really want to say Sigmund. The re the way that Michael's head was carved at beginning at the crown suggested some kind of, you know, almost. You know, a pathway. A pathway. Exactly. Exactly. The descent to madness, but that's just me speaking. <laughs> Tried to make a uh, dream catcher of him. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and consequently, you need to also roll things. a sanity check as you put all this together, because oh, okay, you do think this is crazy. So are you going crazy? Who knows? We'll find out. Who needs sanity? Roll that sanity. Not Peggy. <laughs> Not Peggy, no. no. Well, Peggy had a decent ah. amount when we started. <laughs> uh, that's an 80. That's most definitely over. All right, you're going to lose... Um... That's stupid. You lose five. I'm going to say you lose four, because I don't know why you're going to go psycho over... Well... I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no. I'll tell you now, crazy? fever dreams have led to some weird stuff for me, so. What is weird? Say that again? Fever dreams sometimes can get you some All really right. weird you're things, go, so it's not to say. You lost five. You lost five. You're going a little cray cray. So where is, is this the keeper book? Yes. Um, there's also. Oh. Uh, Look, somebody had to trigger Jeter and Jeter's. have their own thing, and it had to be, there was going to be eventually a problem. All right, we're <laughs> just going to this up here isn't this lovely it's uh yeah, it it's, is. A, it's very lovely it's very cool you can find it at your local game store just like countries yes Family stop it store. i would have got there i literally was about to say it dang I'm, it i'm just waiting for jd it really is a local game store anyway so what's gonna happen here is 
you have, so you are, so your background is in folklore and culture, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do, do you have any kind of ideology or beliefs? Are you a Catholic man? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think Germans are he, Catholic. He was know. actually more inclined towards, while he does focus a lot on Gaelic, he did find that animism had a lot more poignancy to him because it's something that's closer to science and what he could believe in. Okay. He found the Catholicism left him wanting. Okay. So... But he, does, but he is a firm believer that knowledge is power. So... Okay. So... Anim, animism... Everything is a god, essentially. Everything is a god. Okay, well then, Anything could be a god. There what we you're go. holding could be a god. I have found it. I have latched. This book that um, Reginald has just um, exposed to you <laughs> as a book of dreams, it is, the god, it is this god's way of speaking directly to you, and all the answers and knowledge you know are absolutely in there, only if you would look, because it is a direct conversation. If only it wasn't in poor Reginald's hands. Reginald, is there a chance that I could, um... I, I'm not saying this with a smile on my face, it's... <laughs> that, that, that's, that's me, Rook, doing that. <laughs> How dare you smile, <laughs> sir? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, is there a chance that, uh, I could... Look at the book. Maybe there's something I could glean from it. Answers to what happened here. I... I mean, you have no reason to probably not give it to him. Except I, I did... This is like the Mason thing all over again. Right. <laughs> However, I, I did talk with you earlier about how I'm a little bit obsessed with the book. Yeah. I'm a little bit... Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> Red, Reggie, mm -hmm. if, if he could figure something out, why, why don't you just let him look at it? Would it be alright for me to do a psychology check? I'm... To see if I... My, my, my psychology is 40. On who? On what? To see if I can Inside. tell something, some kind of insight with what's going on sure. with yeah. Johan. Because I'm torn about it. I know him, I trust him. I'm also a little bit obsessed with this book. That's fine. I was not successful. Okay. Here you go. So Here you go, Johan. Hand it over. My trust in you wins out. So I, I so I'll give you a second. So I know that NCN you went to look at the window. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Give me a sport hidden. Oh, that'll be fantastic. Note to self, next, next character, shove a lot of points into it. Right? Yes. Spot, yeah, spot hidden, hidden. Is the most important <laughs> Spot stat. hidden and listen. Yeah, spot hidden and listener. Locksmith? Uh, no. No? Okay. You see dried blood... Um, to you, it looks like funny shapes, but you're not entirely sure if those shapes are uh, because blood splatters are interesting, or you know, somebody went on finger painting. You don't know. Who's this Rorschach guy? Why is he always painting pictures know. of my parents fighting? Otherwise, you don't. See, you, it, the window isn't open. You look out the window. You see, you know, the valet parking. You know, having. The, the sea of cars, oh, I shouldn't say sea, but the, the, the sizable amount of cars of the people who are there actually are. down in the gala. Um, you don't see anybody out there. You don't see anybody looking at you. Don't see anything all that remarkable about this window. <sighs> but Dry. Try. Yeah. Um, I'll scrape a little blood off. Okay. Just like, you know, fingernail all right so um johan you have the book of dreams um which i don't think i told you what it was until just now but that's because you can read it 
Um, it clearly says the Book of Dreams to you. Um, hmm. To all of you, it's in that dialect. It, it, to you as well, it is in that dialect. You do not know what it says. Um, you were going to talk. What were you going to say? Or... I, I was going to ask a question that oh, then just it was obvious with... I, I see where... Yeah, just... Okay. Okay. So, uh, what you were aware, Johan, um, you can see as you are looking through this book, this deity is calling out to you, and it is saying, prepare thy body, and how you prepare thy body is by carving these spirals into the back of your head, and down as far as you can get, to prepare yourself for escapism. You would transport from your body into this dream world where presumptually this entity would allow you to live happily ever after for all eternity without a body you don't need it anymore so you enter the world of dreams um so the book clearly says to you free thy mind from thy fleshy prison render thy body still to you you, you put two and two together kill yourself enter the dream world and you see those spiral diagrams, which at this point you know that um, poor Mr. Belfleur was following a ritual that was clearly in this book. Is it is it poor Mr. Belfleur or is it lucky Mr. Belfleur? Well, he, I mean, to you guys it's poor because to you guys you see a dead body. You don't know what he's reading. Professor Geistman might disagree. Meanwhile, Johan's over here like, you lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can, so you also, you, you generally know that most uh, cultures have some form of dream world um, or spirit world. You're pretty sure that dream world and spirit world are closely intertwined, um, but this book would lead you to believe that there is, without a doubt, some form of self-consciousness. Um... I also, unfortunately, need you to do another sanity check. Um, and you also have to take one physical point of damage for, do you have gloves on? <laughs> the book was in a silk bag, not touching skin. Evens, yes. Odds, not a chance. All right. Wearing gloves. All right. So you do not take a physical damage. However, it's slightly hard to trim these pages. <laughs> now what? When you mention it like that, he would take off one glove. <laughs> so yes, I will take that point of damage. Okay. Because that is only fair. Because, you know. Oh boy. Nine. There. And then the sanity roll. Oh, poor, 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 poor. I'm supposed to be below exactly, correct? On or below is a success. success. Darn, I succeeded with a 55, <laughs> which was uh, can right I on. <laughs> Can I ask, what was your starting sanity? So wait, evening? did you just 60. succeed or fail your sanity? I succeed. Okay. I, had, uh, I had 55 sanity and I rolled a 55. Wait, no, you failed. I fail? Okay, then he's lying to me. Quite crisp. No. Wait, hold on. He wait. has 55 and he rolled 55. Oh, I thought you said he had 50 and rolled 55. Okay, yeah, no, you succeeded. You're fine. And I was just oh, asking okay. what he started with was 60 have to lose I mean you're still under points. the bout of madness that this is the word this this book is communicating with you but this is the bird and it's telling me the word I yeah. get it yeah <laughs> but um you're not gonna pick up the uh the dagger and begin the ritual on yourself conveniently that's what you're avoiding not yet <laughs> oh I was gonna say not yet jeez <laughs> <laughs> all right um, uh, how, how does the uh, damage manifest, per se? Uh, you just take one, take, you take one injury point um, under your hit points. You just go down one. 
All right. Is there any like telling thing in like story wise that I have suddenly oh, sustained? How did you man? Yes, you. If, if I may, um, I almost said Ricky, Reginald. Um, the reason, Re the real reason Reginald was wearing gloves is because he got injured and had scars manifest on his hand from touching the book in the initial discovery and appraisal. So that would be... So you, you're, you have a bleeding cut on your finger. Well, not just for, ah. for a point of damage. Cut in him! Ah. Okay, is anybody else doing anything? Mm. Do I... Do I... Do you what? I, I would be looking... I'd be looking at him, presumably, Okay. and doing that. Reginald would pull off his glove and show you scars on his hands that look a lot like what what just happened to you. I'm also going to probably ask you to do a sanity check. I know you believe it, but doesn't that make you a bit crazy? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a... Did you just fumble? Does it count as a fumble? Well, it depends. What's your sanity? What's your sanity? 60. No. <laughs> it's not quite a fumble, then. Okay. It has to be below 50. All right. For that to be a fumble. You take oh, four. Got it. Delightful. And at this point, as you were all kind of looking around in this room. So, no. It's just blood. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you start hearing a weird squelching sound. And eventually you start hearing crackling sounds. Oh, what, 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 what and what's that? the body on the floor starts moving. And bulbous tentacles start sprouting from it. <laughs> I'm so glad I gave you that card. <laughs> <laughs> As what's... numerous heads start pulling, like, from its torso, its its shoulders, and the head itself just cracks open. And you all need to roll sanity checks at disadvantage. I <laughs> mean, with a penalty. Pe penalty, whatever. Penalty <laughs> I was about to say, I didn't realize that we're going into D and D five e so soon. Ah. Okay. So penalty yes. is the. Tens die, mm -hmm. take yes. the worst. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so how, how does this work in uh, Cthulhu and all that? I'm only familiar with the penalty? stuff like... Yeah, taking a penalty. How does this work? Do I roll two percentile die and then you, uh, you roll take the, D, the lowest? You roll the I and, and take the worst. The worst, the highest, technically. Yeah. So... What I did was I rolled two, because I have two sets of dice here. I rolled the tens dice. I rolled two of them, and I took whichever one was worse, so the higher roll. Both of them were a failure anyways, but... One of them was not for me. Yep. When you say tens, are we talking the D100 that has all the double digits on it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Succeeded oh, no. by a pip. <laughs> All right. Pip. Nice. All right. You uh, you might be scared, but you ain't cray. So. <laughs> Ninety nine. Oh, you fumbled. Boy. Well, what's well, what's your sanity? Fifty five. Fifty five. Oh, that's still not a fumble yet. Yeah, you're right. It's not a fumble. All right, but yeah, you definitely. I I failed too. Yeah. Okay. Well. You both get five points of sanity oh, loss. Oh, good. Guess five, you just good. took five more points oh, of sanity so you loss. All, okay, so three of you have just gone crazy. Oh, five. Great. It's <laughs> Colin Cthulhu. Uh, boy, if you only if Um. The lone sane survivor has to kill everybody because they all went nuts. So, yeah. Now you don't have to kill me. I'll take care of myself. So you're going to go... So. Peggy, it's it's appropriate that you get a form of mania. Oh, sure. Um, because <laughs> this has already been really trying on you. Ah! So you're just gonna fly into mega hysterics. Okay. 
Um, yeah. Um, Reginald, uh, you will, however, come to your senses. In hours, or? Because if it's in hours, it really doesn't matter. If it's in, like, minutes. You're going to come to your senses <laughs> nine hours later. Oh, good. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm, I'm well, useless. Wait, is that? For the next nine hours. Because you lost a fifth? Uh, no. no, I just had, just went through, it's my temporary. Oh, because we lost our five points. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. got it. There we go. I'm close. I'm three off from, from my fifth. Me too. <laughs> I Do am, you have a treasured I'm... possession on your person? Oh, I had the book. You had the book, but you don't anymore. No. Okay. Um, you never said we couldn't have guns, though. No, you can have guns. I have a gun. Um, however, the, oh, shit. you, uh... You are going Oops, to sorry. you are going to go through a violent episode where you are going to explode into a spree of violence and destruction. So uh, that gun I mentioned. Yes, you have a gun. Um, <laughs> and Johan, bless your little, probably unequipped soul who does not have a gun, the same is going to happen to you. What is, what oh joy! I get to have all the awful things happen in a rapid succession. Is so, fruit, yeah? Do you want them? I can't eat them. No, it's, it's, I just have to keep talking. It's fine. I uh, just got confused. Oh. Okay. So, because the monster has sprung up first, it's going to go first. Uh, remember, as I told you guys earlier, um, you will get a bonus to your attack rolls against it because of the outnumbered uh, mechanic in Call of Cthulhu, which for those of our viewers who are watching, if they're not familiar, um, essentially, when there's five, wait, one, two, three, when there's four against one, that one is outnumbered. And so it's at disadvantage because it's all by its own, so it doesn't have any backup. Um, I mean, shoot, technically you guys have six. Wait, five. Why do I keep it putting? Anyway, you have poor little Frankie who is going to make a sanity check because I didn't do it for him yet. One momento. I forgot to calculate sanity for him, by it's the way. It's power. Oh, He's it at is? 50. Yep. He's at 50. You know what? I'm going to put him. His sanity's at 50. He got a 42. Okay. So he's not crazy either, but he's Lucky probably Frankie. peed himself uh, because he is a wuss. Um, so at that point, um, the... Uh, undead hulking mass thing is uh, going to attempt to attack you guys. Tight, tight, tight. Tight, tight, tight. Unfortunately, uh, I also am a newer player to Call of Cthulhu, and my character has never actually really been in violent altercations, so I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Well, somewhere over here is the... Somewhere. <laughs> uh, well, I've got it right here. It's okay. it, I've got it right here in the. Um... So who's he attacking? He, he so he's attacking everyone. Okay. Because he can. Because he has this ability, and this ability is he lets out a really weird sound, mm -hmm. um, and that sound will leave you guys stunned if you uh, do not succeed. Okay. So he's going to roll his attack. And we have to roll some sort of defense if we can, such as dodge. Yes, and it is a strange song. The song of lost dreams is what he's doing. So I'm sorry, repeat that again. Um, are we going to be rolling for our defense against it? Yes. A lot of times, like you are going to be rolling after the initial sanity roll. The investigator should be able to. Uh, it looks like it is rolling. If it's dodge. Hold on. The problem here is, is I, I control F ah. and it only has the one stun up there for some reason. Song of Lost Dreams, that's why it's because it's not cold. Okay. You have to do an opposed power roll or become okay. dazed for 1d3 rounds. Okay, so we oh, all roll a uh, power. <coughs> so we all roll a d100. To try and be successful on our power. Mm -hmm. oh, so under wow. our power score. Yes. Yay. Wow, get it. <laughs> get it. Okay. Get it. Get it. 
It doesn't matter because I was sitting on the floor. This poor, this poor man. Oh, did Johan go down? He didn't power. <laughs> Seventy-five oh. over sixty. Okay. Spend your luck. I guess I could spend fifteen. Put yeah, six. You can, you can spend your Wait, luck. No. How is yeah, um, that Sam doing? Uh, thirty-eight of forty. Well, Ooh. thirty-eight of eighty. So hard. Oh, okay. nice, nice. And Frankie got a thirty-six out of fifty. So lucky, Frankie. Frankie is also so none of you are stunned. Frank the tank. Good job, guys. It is at that point. How do we determine initiative? Dex. Dexterity. Mm -hmm. So, um, Frankie's dex is a sixty. Um, the monster's dex is a 35, so I have a feeling it's going after all of y'all mm -hmm. again, which I think that's by design. To Peggy is 70. Chance. Yep. So Peggy, wow. who, is anybody over 70? No. Um, nope. Are you guys okay? It is eight. Are you guys okay with going a little bit longer for sure. this? Okay. I'm, I'm about sure. to die, so it's fine. <laughs> you might but all die in a second, I fully, so yeah. I fully <laughs> expect that if I survive, I won't be for long. <laughs> Reginald is at 50. All right. Uh, Johan and Etienne? 65. 55. Beautiful. I can't drive 55. Ah. He's too slow. All right. So, I uh, believe you're first then. I am first. Uh, can I do anything besides scream? You can. Oh, excellent. Uh, so you're in a state of hysterics, but hysterics don't. I mean, if we're if we're gonna look at the uh, the Greek, for mm -hmm. example, because of the word hysteria, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> women in bouts of hysteria clawed the eyes of men out, um, removed certain body parts of them, uh, all kinds of really psycho crazy things. So unleash all of the rage that dear Peggy has been holding back. Cool. Um, <laughs> Unleash your inner fury. Right. So, um, we have walked through the museum. Because believe it or not, Peggy is not concealing a hidden weapon on her. <laughs> she was here for the party. <laughs> uh, so she does. Um, so... Uh, she can't use daggers. Um, there, is a, there is a dagger in the yeah, hand. Uh, oh, wait. No, that dagger is in his hand, or did you pry it away? I did. We didn't get there. I was making... <laughs> um, as, I walk, as we were walking through the muse museum and what I know about the museum, are there any, um, I mean, firearms? Not in the ancient Greek area, unless you're probably going to be talking about like spears or bows. Like, I think they might have had atlatls, or was that okay. central to indigenous is, people? Is there anything else big and sharp around here? In this specific room? Um, in the in this room slash in the uh, museum rooms right outside. Oh yeah, there are spears. Cool. I'm gonna get one. Okay. You're gonna have to spend an action to run over to the exhibit, grab it, and you're gonna have to hightail it back. Yeah. Um, what is your monster's move? Mm, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't? Okay. Uh, cool. It has a seven. Oh, okay. That's normal. That is normal? Okay. That it still can good. actually move just fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Peggy's got a nine, though. Peggy does have a nine. Peggy can move fast. Yeah. Um, go, so go, you go, have go, a move, go. and then the action to grab, and then the running back. Cool. Okay. All right. That is what I do. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. I might have also, you know, torn my dress up a little so I, I can run a little faster. Not girdled your loins? Um, girded your loins? I don't know. It depends on how much Greek you've studied. Right. No, I went to women's college. So <laughs> is Frankie up next? Um, <laughs> next is Etienne. Oh, okay. Etienne. I am pulling out the... Uh, uh, semi-automatic 45. Ooh, neat! And shooting the beastie. All right, go for it. Shoot the beastie. So, the, beastie. the weapon I'm seeing as a one and then a three in brackets. 
Um, so with those attacks, I yeah. believe it is with firearms. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it's. Uh, uh, it says here highest level of success for fighting or maneuvering. Mm-hmm. Is this a maneuver or a fight? No, no, it's a. He's shooting. Yeah. That's okay. an attack. Because in the move in the combat order, it says establish order of attack. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it says A, initiate attack flee or maneuver. So it's he's attacking, so then it goes down to fight back. Um, Highest yeah. level of success win. So he's going to roll his firearms. Okay. You're going to roll a dodge. Yeah. Okay. And okay. if he wins and the defender does not... I think that one in three is that potentially how far away you are from the person for the the weapon damage. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Eh. Oh. No worries. Um, the one in three, I think it's if you take one shot, you roll normally. If you're going to take multiple handgun shots, it's a penalty die. So you could try and shoot three times, but you would roll essentially with a penalty die. Got it. Oh, oh, okay. It. <laughs> I found it. No, that's... I was trying it was to... A, it was a joke. I'll allow it. That's a joke. Okay. I'm really impressed because I honestly... I'm going to be transparent here. I don't know anything about it's combat because we... I, now, Dr. Nellie Newton has never done no. that. She runs away. <laughs> Single bullet. All right. So, Single bullet. Uh, Single bullet? Yeah. Okay, so then I roll my dodge. Let me find it. Oh god. Well, he may get fails. Yeah, if he's got a 35, okay. then his dodge is what? No, he has a 17. For, I mean, for, uh, yeah. 35 for Yes. Yeah, 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 17. All right, yeah, so yeah. you are successful, so you get to roll yes. your weapons damage. Okay. No whammies. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, max damage, I'll take that. Oh, wait. Is that a... Okay, it is a zero. Sorry, I had to look at the light because I couldn't <laughs> tell if it was a zero or, like, a three. And it's like, wait, what? No. Yeah, zero's a ten. Twelve points. Nice. Twelve points? Yeah. Nice. Die ten plus two. Yeah, 45 is a 1d10 plus two. Yeah. Yeah, people can die in one shot. Cold fire fire and two legs. <laughs> that, that's, shot. Yeah, that's why Ricky has a 1911. That's why Reginald's carrying a 1911. You see, like, some of the bulbous tentacles explode, and just this beautiful amber translucent pus just <laughs> comes out of it, just Lovely. splays. Really um, and you, you hear in your mind, I will! Feast upon you. Cool. Cool. Just cool. you. Cool. Cool. Oh, in my mind. In your mind. Can, can I? Can I make a quip back? Sure, absolutely. You can quip. I encourage quips. Quip away. Oh man, I just had it too. Crap. <laughs> what? Um, I'll say I know people who done better than that. <laughs> not just because I'm useless, but because his character sheet, he is not a fighter. <laughs> well, there's me. I'm butler. done. Well All done. Right. Well done. Well done. You you said some She's kind of quip. And... Like, you know. You did. Yeah. No, he said it. Oh, you did? I you said I did. You were totally not paying attention. What was the quip? <laughs> Say it again. Quip. Almost shed. Oh, okay. I know people done better than you. <laughs> okay. It was a good one. I'm sorry. I was I was asking. Okay, so it's Frankie's turn next. Uh, Frankie has a 20 in firearms, a 25 in long range arms. Well, look at fighting brawl because I gave him a blackjack. He has a, he has a 40. So you are suggesting that this guy run up to this monstrosity and just give it the one two. Well, he's not. You're right. He has a 45 intelligence. He's doing this. He's doing this. <laughs> Maybe he's got a broom or something too, or yeah. grabs a spear. He's got a wrench. He no. just like pulls out his wrench. I mean, sure, that could work. Um, what does the blackjack kosh mean? 
A blackjack is a leather strap with a metal thing in it that's about. It's actually. This would be. Oh, he and he he could like whip it, whip it. You can. Eh, I'll do you that. Can kill he'll somebody with a blackjack. He'll try that, and and he'll just but you know. It's his, only like. His he might he might have saved his sanity check the first time. Um, he does not just then, so he loses four. Um, because he just watched the bulbous quelch. You you guys, I mean. Do we have to roll? Do I we have to didn't roll? make your roll, but I should have. So I yeah. was out of the room. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are out of the room. No, you, she was in the room. No, I she's ran out. out. I'm she's, running back in. She, yeah, she had to I take her whole... spirits in the room. No, uh, she's out. So as that squelch happens, yeah, I do need everybody to do a sanity. I'm so sorry. Oh, you are not sorry. I'm so sorry. You're not sorry. I'm successful You're this fine. time. Yeah, see. <laughs> And if you if you if you lose, you just take three. Um. I got a one. You're fine. You're so fine then. You you finally. Darn. You're finally like back in this fight. You're crazy. You Are know? you? You're out hoping to lose all of your sanity. <laughs> he wants to go crazy. So he's gonna attempt oh, to. Yes. There. So the dodge. <laughs> who does not dodge? If you have a 17 and you roll an 81, that's not a fumble. No. Nope, 96 to 100 is. Okay, 96 to 100. So he is going to be able to shoot. Um, and so he gets to do a 1d8 plus d3. Damage bonus. Damage, damage bonus. Uh, over right here in the corner. His damage Combat. bonus is 1d4. So, so he does a 1d8. This is a d8, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. A 2. And plus a plus pyramid. A, plus a pyramid. Also known as a D4. So a five. <laughs> so he does Hi. five. I'm sorry, did that bother so you? So we had 12. No. I'm just sharing it. So. Who don't know. <laughs> Who don't know what dice are. Well, you don't, so. <laughs> I said pyramid. I was being helpful because a D4 is. All right. Cool. <laughs> so he goes up and he smacks it around. Yeah, so he just whipped it, and in a uh, shocking turn of horrible events, I don't know if I've done something right or wrong. I don't really care. Did you kill the monster? Um, <laughs> you did five points of damage they, after John, or uh, after he did his 12. 12. Yeah, so he only had an HP of 17. <laughs> uh, I, I will prove it. Uh, uh, you prove did it right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, beautiful little Frankie, this string bean of a man, coked out of his mind, fearless to nothing, just, who's your daddy, who's your daddy? <laughs> and it just erupts into a beautiful, disgusting, it is my gelatinous wave of goo, and <laughs> you guys are still gonna have to make a dang sanity check, but I'll let you have a bonus, because... <laughs> you are coming back into the room! <laughs> and so as you come back into the room, you just see this flow of amber fluid. Um, oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> Did, are you okay? You, you, all, you only take three. So you're really only worried about the, the fifth. Um, That's an 82 on my end, so no uh, go. All right, you take, everybody would take three who fails, and if you got, if you moved to, you know, the fifth, then let me know, but otherwise. I'm, if, I, did, if I lose any more sanity, I'm going, I'm well, losing it. By okay. the way, you said I was going off on like a violent rampage earlier. You never even were able to get there yet. I know. Which, uh, I would have just had advantage on my I mean, my I guess I his my is somewhat of a problem here because you're still <laughs> enraged. Rage, yeah. And um, so is Johan. Can I, yeah. can I just, oh, what's going to happen? I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in the anger zone too. Yeah, you were both in the anger zone still. So it's Johan and then Reginald, so that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, so you two are Hulk Smash, and you just saw this string bean, I'm just gonna keep calling him, just erupt this monstrosity that used to be Mr. Michael Belfour's personhood until it was completely disgusted, affied. Um, you still thirst for blood. Well, Frankie. How do? I'm gonna just 
<laughs> All right, you're gonna okay. Let me see his dodge here. I guarantee it'll probably be better he, than whatever I roll. No, he has a 30 in dodge. He fails. He got a 64. So I believe you're hitting him over the head with a with a chair or something. The book. Oh, the book. He's going <laughs> to he is going to take an additional point of damage as a gash will erupt in his head, and he also makes needs to make a sanity check as the book physically has touched him. Hey! He succeeds. And do I add that bonus damage onto that? You sure do. Takes four. All right. He's got ten, nine, eight, seven, six. He has six HP left. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so... Reginald, he has just, you've just witnessed uh, a pistol whipping, if you would, of the book. That book that you so desperately have been coveting. That book that... I, I'm, Reginald's ready to shoot. I... Well, I, who are you shooting? Well, I mean, I... Best case scenario, Reginald is Shoot. shooting the body. That body is a, it's a gelatinous form that is unmoving. You can shoot it's at already, it. It's already... Yeah, if you're gonna let me do the best case scenario, he's just gonna. I'll let you. Pop off three rounds. It just the... says you're violent. It doesn't say who you're violent toward. I'll allow it. Yeah, that's so. that's why I'm. You're just saying, gonna double like, tap. Best case scenario, right. I'm I'm shooting. It'll I'm just gonna shoot as a body. dead thing. It fails. How does he touch? I don't know. I just wanted to try. Who put a 17 HP and a 17 in dodge? I have words. Just well, kidding. that's. I mean. I don't and have that's... words. This actually is nice. I don't like TPKs. <laughs> Even though it might saying, still. Like... Okay. Am roll I, your... If I'm just shooting them, well, I mean. I mean, theoretically, roll your damage. Even though it's dead. I guess I anyway. should make sure that I actually shoot the monster yeah. instead of. Sorry. Yeah, I hit it. All right. Just normal. Do I need to roll my damage because I'm just shooting the. Yes, actually. Do roll your damage. Okay. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> Almost maxed it out. Oh, jingle please. Eleven. All right. It doesn't. It just. It stays dead. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. It stays dead. Anyway, Etienne, um, mm. I believe you and the uh, the hysteric. Miss Peggy are witnessing the the book towards poor Frankie. He's double tapping. What are you two doing? Um, I'm remembering that the police were called. I'm I'm gonna go find them. Okay. <laughs> okay, you absolutely can. So she's just gonna book it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wonderful. All right. <gasps> Uh, wow. I don't know what to do at this point in time. Um, that's messed up. Cause, uh, <laughs> that's messed up. That's messed up. That's yeah. messed up. That's a summary. What am I going to do otherwise? <laughs> Start shooting my own people? I don't know. Well, Johan um, has equipped poor Frankie, whom you don't know, but, you know. He led you here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he knew about it 15 minutes before he told us. So, well. he's got something coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... I'm gonna regret this. <laughs> do it. Whatever it is, do it. Dude, don't let your Cthulhu dreams be dreams. <laughs> don't leave it in the book. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm going to do, I'm going to have myself a little party. <laughs> you probably are. A little, a little spiral party. Yeah, you probably are. I'm a little concerned You're about that. Me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phantom. What are? What is? Johan, are you the id or the anima?
This is a persuade check. So do, um, do you roll, or does he roll? I will. I, I would imagine this is going to be one of these things where I'm effectively trying to pull him out. Okay, okay. So that would either... I think that would be psychoanalysis. Based on what Chris said earlier when uh, oh. the town was calming down. Yeah, but I, I kind of pulled a persuade on... On... Uh, you know what? Screw it. It's a one shot. I don't, I don't care. Use yeah. your persuade. Yeah. So. Persuade. Can you burn? Can you burn luck only until a success or to a level of success? You can burn it to a level of success. So if oh, you, good. You succeeded, but you're like, oh, if I do got six less, I'd have a, you know, a hard success. Then yeah, burn your six to get a hard success. Yeah. Or, you know, um, five, whatever. Okay, thank you. That, that That's kind of what I was looking for right there. Um, thank you, Code GM. <laughs> or oh. Yogi Bird. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I just made um, things. That's... Yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> that's worth the cost. <laughs> 42 luck gets me down to an extreme success on Persuade. All right, oh, cool. All right. You will... Uh... uh successfully take him out of his bout of vicious uh, violence. But unfortunately, uh, Sir Johan, hey, I'm going to need you to make a sanity check as you come to and realize what you've just done to poor Frankie and also the gelatinous <laughs> thing. I don't <laughs> feel bad about half of it. <laughs> Nope, 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 afraid not. I wish you, you, you succeed or you fail? I failed. Okay. This is what fun. is your sanity <laughs> at now? Uh, we're about to find out, aren't we? <laughs> he is going to take a minus four. Where, where are you um, at now? Minus how much again? Four. four. What are you at now? 43. That's it, that's past fifth. He was already past the fifth, actually, but... Yeah, I, he's... Okay, so you are going to go into a mania. That book... Is, is the answer. It, it, is, is the answer. This is the, this is the answer. This is the answer to all my questions, all the problems, all the possibilities, all the... All the and he's just going to start walking in circles. Yeah. And uh, he's... Uh, he's completely forgotten about Frankie at this point, That's and okay. is... <laughs> doesn't even care that he just clocked him upside the head with this thing and is now proceeding to open it and is looking at it and is for lack of anything else he's still touching it with his bare hand all right so yeah if you're touching it you're gonna you're gonna take another uh one point of injury um, or damage or loss of hp and your hand is bleeding as you're touching these pages so your blood is mixing with poor michael belfour's uh Rich Reginald, Please. you are still in a violent throw, and he has your book, and... See, this is what I was waiting for. Tien has a gun. I don't care about guns, but yeah. the book. I care, I <laughs> okay, you book. Can, yeah, you do want that book. That... The, the book, not mine. <clears throat> there may be a backstory behind this man. Find out. <laughs> the book. We're talking I, the book here. Am I, am I shooting it? I might, I, whatever you, what are you doing? I, you, you, you have disclosed that you tried to procure this book silently from everyone, so we all assumed that something was going on with that book. Skips and you have touched the book before. And you physically have touched the book before. I have, so I do, I do kind of want the book. And you do kind of want the book. Take the book. Take the book, Rich. <laughs> Just spin the prayer wheel. <laughs> I, 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 I want the book. You're so you shooting Johan? Yeah, that's a 21 out of 45, so that's a hard success. That is a hard success. So does he need to I dodge need to on the, 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 the yeah. hard? 
Yeah. Okay, so you roll a dodge, and if you get, remember, if you get your number or lower. It's a regular success. It's hard a regular. Still beats it. So yeah. So let us know. You, you if have you, to get a have, hard success. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my dodge is 42. Uh -huh. Sorry. I rolled a 43. If I spend all of my remaining luck, what does that get me? Your dodge is a 42? Yes. Okay. I think you put extra points into yeah. it after the no, half no, that makes sense. Oh. Can I Can I spend 20 points of luck? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. John, you have to beat a one. <laughs> you are now going to be unlucky, but what's the penalty for no luck? You just are, you don't have any more luck? Um, I think death. <laughs> and then if there's a luck, a luck for right. you. Right. I mean, you don't have, if you, you run out of luck, you're just unlucky now, but. Yeah, I think that's, that's as far as we're going. I mean, conversely, Rook, you can also, I guess, spend all your luck. So, am I able to push and spend luck? <laughs> no, I believe. No, you, you may no. not push on opposed rolls. Ah, got it. Well, I will spend all my luck, but it's still not going to be enough to beat a one. <laughs> all right. But I'll do it anyway because. Why not? <laughs> well. There's no point to do it then. That's only five points of damage. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need it to. Oh, that's, that's a major good. wound. Yeah, you're bleeding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. You're bleeding out. If nobody does first aid on you, you're going to die. Oh. Yeah. Well, I die. <laughs> <laughs> well, Etienne is still in this room, and. Um, he Peggy. doesn't know me that well. <laughs> and Peggy has run for the police that, unfortunately, um, Stephanopoulos, St Stephan, not a lot of fun polis, uh, as dear Frankie calls him, has purposefully delayed the police, mm -hmm. as we all heard at the beginning. So, uh, dear Peggy, as you've rushed into the, mm -hmm. the gala, um, you don't see any police. Uh-uh. And I find Adam Stephanopoulos. Stephanopoulos. All right. And I start screaming at him about the police and dead bodies and they're fighting. People. And, Is he still oh. carrying a spear? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're carrying oh, a I'm spear. still carrying a With spear. With her ripped dress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's blood. So and yes. Adam is going to say, My dear, I know your father is a friend of mine, but. He's dead. Okay. She stays in gentlemen. Yeah, she has a, a temporary uh, bout of madness. Uh, come, come, darling. Let's time. yeah, let's just get you out of this uh, this this room. That dress is probably awful tight. Let's get some fresh air, and he'll forcibly. I will not let him do that. All right. Well, I think you'd have to strength check with him. All right, I strength check. All right. He got a fifteen. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I can do this. You, <laughs> you rolled a ninety. All How right. much luck do you have? Burn it all. I, no, no, no. I have enough to do this. A uh, fifteen. Is that an extreme for him? Oh so yeah. I, so I just have to get down to thirteen. I have. I have enough, guys. I can spend. I can do the math too. What, 77 to get to an extreme as well? All right. <laughs> I would have three luck points left. Okay, so you, you refuse Beautiful. his arm, twist mm -hmm. away from him. You, There are no police inside. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? Poke him with the spear. Uh, I'm running outside to find them. Okay, you, uh, uh, you will find the police outside. They Excellent. Have been stalled by what looks to be some. Of I'm the gonna others. scream murder. Okay. And my father's dead. All right. 
And yes. All right. The police will <laughs> uh, absolutely take in the your state of your dress, the fact that you have a spear. They will, however, <laughs> restrain you. But oh, they sure. will ask, you know, take us to this. Sure, sure, and I will. All right. So you <laughs> will get the police. All right, so meanwhile, while they're walking down the hall with you. Uh-huh. Well, I'm like running and like trying and to drag them. And Adam uh, Stephanopoulos is, no, no, just wait, just won't. Like, you, the pot, you know, he's, they just don't, they're, sir, this is a police investigation. Please step aside. Sir, you have delayed us enough. There is a, apparently a murder. Please step aside. So, you know, that's going on. You three are still in the room with the gelatinous uh, carcass. Uh, <laughs> and you have shot mm -hmm. at Johan. Johan, you are bleeding out. Etienne, what are you doing? Uh, putting my pistol back in the holster okay. and then attempting first aid on uh, All right. Johan. Okay. The he might be a German, okay. but you know what? Uh, German, yeah. you're a World War One veteran. I know. <laughs> I know. But at the same time, we might take pity on him because of how harshly sure, sure. the Germany, He's, the, the Germans seems to be a nice person. sanctioned. Seems. So and Lord, your are... hunt hasn't been in Germany for at least ten years. So you are trying to take. Do you have the book in your in your physical Johan position? Had it. Johan, I want to take it. From you want to take it? Go. Okay. Um. Uh. You're probably going to have to strength check against him. Does he get a penalty while he's bleeding out with strength? I mean, you tell me. You're I, the GM. I feel like I should give. I feel like that's going to be applicable. Mm -hmm. um, so simultaneously as Etienne is trying to, you know, get down onto his knees to apply pressure, you're going to scramble. So I'm going to need a contested strength check from both of you. Um, and you're going to roll a disadvantage rook. So um, I believe we have explained to take the higher with a, with of the a d10. With a, oh, with a penalty die. Becca, would you like to explain what a penalty die is? Uh, yeah, as we <laughs> have used penalty die and bonus die, uh, the penalty die is a tens. So the 10, 20, 30, 40 mm. percentile 36. Die. And you have to take the higher one if it's a penalty. That was me taking the higher one. Yeah, nice. So I already, I already 36 said out of a yeah. 65 strength. What did you get? Cool. A one. Because I'm using luck. You won't, you don't have any luck. Yes, I do. You have one it luck. Tend to shoot me. No, he does. No, he didn't need to use luck, so he get he got to keep all of his luck because yeah, he couldn't be a one with anyway. I started 65, and I haven't. Yes, you had. No, you were lot. No, you you went all the way down to one. No, I didn't. That was what when I you said. Shot I went me, down to. You it. said I'm going to make it extreme. To take it, I took it down. You made it into a one. I recall this quite distinctly. What as I was. I was oh, you die. put the yeah. die to a one, a one. not yeah, your luck yeah. to yeah, yeah. a one. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. I understand the miscommunication here. So, what is your uh, luck at now? Spend 25, 20. Okay. 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 And so what is the die roll now with the 20 spent? 15. Or wait, 10. Sorry. 10. And, okay, so... Which would be an extreme success. And for he me. cannot modify with luck? He could. Mark if he's going to. I thought he okay. was... He cannot push it, but he took... Do you have? Do you have enough luck to break that? Can you that? spend luck to break a, an extreme? Uh, I have twelve luck currently. Ouch. I have a thirty-six result. That would bring it to a twenty-four. I don't know where that stands on the success what scale because I don't have sixty-five. 65. It would be a hard success, but not an extreme. So I would win. So he would still win. Okay. So essentially here, Reginald pries the book from your dying fingers. You're just, you're bleeding out. Dying. Dying. Uh, he will, are, are you touching with your bare hands or do you, do got, you, you got your gloves? Uh, he only has one glove on. Well, fire no, in my right hand. Well, no, the Johan only has one. Right hand looks in my left hand. Okay. 
left hand still has a. Okay. Are you putting the Are you putting the book into the silver pouch, or the silk pouch? I would just be running. Okay. So you just book it. Um, you're going to pass the police and her. So as as he's passing, running, what is your reaction? That is your dear family friend, mm -hmm. just full on running. Um, I'm going to say, Reginald knows, Reginald was there. Reginald knows he saw it. Sir, we're going to have to ask you to stop. We're going to, uh, we have a few questions for you, sir. You're in a bout of violence and they this book is They were just trying yours. to shoot and I'm trying to protect this book. This is a, this is a treasure that I'm trying to get it away from the people that were shooting. Okay, well, sir, but we're going to ask you just not to leave the premises. Fast, I'm... You're going to fast talk? Fast right? talk it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, what? Shut the <laughs> heck up! You got a freaking... Okay! They believe you, so they'll just... I'll stay. I'll totally stay on the premises. I'm just going to go... We're going to step uh, aside, and we're never going to see poor little Reggie the, ever again. All right. safe. All right. They step aside. Bye, uh... My first aid did succeed. Okay. Your first aid? Okay, good. So, Johan, you are no longer bleeding now. So, uh, Reginald, yeah, sorry. you have, you've just left, I'm assuming. You're leaving, right? You're gone. I'm, I'm just running to put okay. as much distance as I can. You're leaving the gala. Yep. All right. Peggy, mm -hmm. you bring the police to the murder scene. Uh, they respectively will, will say that they somehow, because they're harder, you know, they're DC cops. They somehow succeed their own sanity checks, uh, despite the gelatinous mess. Um, oh yeah, we saw we saw worse things out back in the. Uh, I'm actually the from New York. <laughs> uh, um, the you've police, been to the Bronx. You've seen it all. I promise you. The police will step in to start helping Johan. One will go over to Etienne, who seems remarkably. Uh, unharmed compared to everybody else. They'll begin to ask you questions. Um, sure. And that is where we will close for the night with the police oh. successfully entering the room which the, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the play manual does say. That's, that's it, man. Police are there. They take over. The investigators no longer investigate. And you guys have somehow managed to all survive I mean, a Peggy ends up in a mental hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're permanently maniaed, right? Uh, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. No, Yo uh, Johan can, is. Oh yeah, no, trigger. Johan's yeah. definitely maniaed. Yeah. Johan is. Uh, hey, and I got to shoot Brooke. Let's say that post-game is not going to go very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Johan is. Answers. Johan's gonna... Oh man. Mm -hmm. Johan is is going to be the big bad in somebody's campaign. <laughs> right? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for playing. Thank you very much for staying. I'm going to do a special shout out to our chat who's stayed and been involved despite our um, 38 minute overtime. We really do deeply appreciate you. We appreciate your involvement. We're super happy that you've been entertained. Somebody called me a treasure and I, <laughs> I really am emotional. Um, <laughs> We, again, you know, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you had fun watching. Again, Phantom JD, thank you so much for everything you guys do. I look pretty. Chat looks good. It's wonderful. So thank you guys for keeping us going through all the technical issues and also, you know, putting us on the air. We really appreciate it. Um, as this was already plugged earlier, I'm gonna do it again because please, I can. Please. If you want game swag, if you want fun stuff, head over to Petri's Family Gaming or um, or your local store. If Petri's is not near you, however, again, they have a website, so you know we would always, you know, appreciate it if you could help out our local game store because we like to do that. Uh, um, check them out in person or online. Um, again. Thank you so much. This has been an iconic production, and have a great night.